Well, there it goes. <laughs> Whoops. I thought it wasn't going on and it was being a little tricky. All right, I think I'm here. <laughs> I think I got it all fixed and um, I'm hoping I had a little bit of a weird thing with my camera. So I'm hoping this is going to be okay here today. Um, I am so glad you guys are here. Welcome Temple. So glad you weren't late today. That's awesome. Welcome Sharon. I'm, I'm very excited that you're here and yes, um, it's been fun. I've done uh, many things with Ivy at Studio Works, so I'm, I'm glad that um, you were able to watch us together. We have such a great time together. And um, Cheryl, welcome. Hi, Laura. Thank you, Karen. I, I appreciate the thing. It just looks a little dark on here and I went to look at my camera and for some reason my settings have changed because I'm also filming a class. And so it could be just some settings. It looks pretty good here, but my ISO is a little off. So hopefully it, it'll stay bright enough. So I feel like that's bright enough. So we should be good. So I'm going to wait until some more people roll on in here. Welcome, Peg. So glad that you're back. Most of you guys have been coming every week. I think we're on week seven. It's pretty exciting. And I have some really exciting news. I have made it to my first level of monetization on YouTube. So I've applied to get all the fun chat features and super chat and all that. So that's going to be really exciting once that goes through. So it, I guess it takes like a month. It's a process, but I'm pretty excited about it. So um, I'm one step closer to, to being fully monetized, which I'm really excited. So it's been a journey. So thank you. It's all because of you guys, I mean, watching my videos and it's all about watch time here on YouTube. So you guys have been uh, really supporting me and I appreciate it so much. And this has been a fun journey. And I love connecting with you guys here in a, in a new and different way. It's definitely filled a gap that um, I think us artists when we're alone, uh, it's just nice to connect with other creatives. Even if you're just watching and you enjoy creative things, uh, I just love connecting with everyone. Christine, welcome. I'm so excited that you're here. I think this is your first time in chat. Maybe Diane too. Hello, Diane. Um, let's see, brand new to Pan Pastels. Um, you can't wait to learn more. Well, I definitely have come to the right place. I got lots of uh, good stuff about Pan Pastel. And um, yeah, welcome, Michelle. I'm so glad you made it today. You're here. Um, your laptop broke down and you will not start. So it's been sent back to the company. Oh, well, I'm glad it's under warranty. That would be a bummer if it wasn't. Um, it sounds like you chat a lot on your laptop. So um, I, you're on another laptop with a broken keyboard. Well, I'm just glad you're here, Michelle. Thank you for coming. And I'm really excited to share with you guys what we're going to be doing today. I've always, I, I don't really um, pigeonhole myself into any specific style or, you know, I, I love it all. And I, I think that is, I've had to accept that's just who I am. And I love abstract. I love to do it more. I have so many interests. And so I don't really just stick in one lane. I, I like to do it all. But what I've found out over the, all these years is that um, it all looks like me once it's done. <laughs> but I, I could argue that along the way, but a lot of my friends and um, people I know um, say it, it does all look like you. And so it's interesting. And I, and I really think it's something worth talking about. Um, sometimes people wanna say they're a landscape artist or, or portrait or figurative or, um, abstract or, you know, all types of labels. And if you don't know what that is, it's okay. And it's okay to try them all out and it's okay to love more than one. And, um, I have definitely felt like I'm supposed to only like one, like I've been told that on my, or I've just kind of taken that in on, um, my journey. And, um, I no, it's okay to like them all. You guys, we get more diversity, more, things we get to do, more ideas um, when we can uh, expand and play in different types of, you know, subject matter. So abstract's always been one of my favorite and um, I've, I've done uh, quite a few of them, 
but what I found that the biggest misunderstanding about abstract is that the reason why sometimes they look simple is just because there's just not a real defined like approach to them. And when you get to know what um, really makes abstracts successful, it's basically having some type of structure. Um, composition can be the biggest backbone of abstract. And you know, when it works, it's usually working around some type of structure that has been laid down first or practiced. And one of them today, I, I've made it a pretty obvious here, it's the grid um, uh, composition. And the grid composition is, can be used for all types um, of, of things. It, any of these compositions can be used for almost anything. But um, for abstract, I think what it's really nice for is it's simple, it's easy to understand to a certain point, and it really gives you a foundation to play and have some fun. And so I have laid out, I just went on my cutting mat and I did one inch squares. I could have probably done two inch squares and been fine. I'm not trying to emulate these squares. I mean, you can, if you, if you Google grid abstract, you'll see all kinds of abstracts that are even just these little, you know, color swatches and everything. So um, there's a lot of different kinds out there, but what's cool is, is you can break them up in different chunks and you can, I'll show you a couple examples of abstracts that I've done. Um, that's a grid abstract for fun. This was one of my earlier ones that I've done. And as you can see, I'm laying down color in a grid, but I also have other things in there. It doesn't have to be straight, straight lines. You can, um, put angles in there, you can put diagonals in there. It's just based off of a grid and it keeps you to where you can put color down and think about um, what you wanna lay down for design. It gives you a jumping off point, you know? When I do a lot of my pieces, I put down my blacks first. So usually if you start looking at um, abstracts, this is a challenge for you. Um, go to people that you really like. You can even go into my feed, whatever, whoever you like for abstracts. And look at the darks in them. And you will see that even if they're a rainbow artist or they use lots of color or, or it looks really, really messy, usually if they're successful, they have black or darks going through them. It's like a, an eight to, on my value scale, They'll usually have these colors carrying the piece in some way. Even if it's subtle or something, they'll have those contrasting colors carrying the piece. And so here you can see I've used these blacks to, to carry some of that throughout. Um, I get real literal and that has worked for me. You know, and this piece is another one that I use violets and um, I went real literal but I use the violets and you can see the grid in the background. And if you want to see the beginnings, this is really faded, but I literally grid it out in the beginning. And then I add a lot of elements. And so I put, you know, some, some, um, I can't think of the name all of a sudden, some flowers. <laughs> and I, I, I like to incorporate and layer on that. And that, that's where you can change it. And you can even add another composition on top of the grid. So um, this was one of my favorites I did. The one colors that I'm playing off today, this is one of my favorites. It's not necessarily off the grid, but um, it just kind of gives you that color vibe. So all of the colors I've picked out today are, are played off of this. This was my inspiration. And um, I mean, but you can see like when you get your grid down on any of these, once you have some, some type of structure, then, then you can go and um, use all the squiggles and use the pencils and add mark making and break down some lines and, and do all that. But it gives you something in your head to focus on. And I think that is where a lot of people don't talk about that when um, teaching abstract. 
it's it's like it just mir miraculously comes out and you're supposed to know it and if you don't then you feel you know bad about yourself <laughs> and i think these things really need to be talked about that once i discovered abstract was like the core of it was composition it was like a light bulb went off and i was like okay well I'm just going to study a couple of the compositions and one was the grid and then one is the cruciform and you can even use the cruciform over the grid. That's the crazy thing. So I'm going to um, play with those today and um, got to get my tape back up here and let's see here. I am one that is all for the buffet of art sampling. So much to learn. I think it all informs the next. I, I, I really do. I think that too. I, I think it all plays in to each other. And I really don't think we should limit ourselves. The only time I think maybe we should limit ourselves if we feel really overwhelmed. And that's what I mean, like even sticking with like one composition. Like don't try to take in so much. Just practice one. Like I could do just grid abstracts and that's it. And um it would probably be an endless amount of of learning. I, and the other thing is doing abstracts is like really giving yourself that time to do a few. Um, I also have here, I wanna see, I thought I was gonna keep them right here, but you can also draw up, you know, black and white thumbnails of them. And that really helps to play around with ideas and just use values to um to play with the the different you know values in the piece instead of colors that that's a, also really powerful i'm glad you like the violet michelle thank you yeah you know temple i i'm glad you appreciate that i i think it's just definitely i don't really i don't think i've ever really seen it out there like people just saying it's it's based on composition you know and so um the veil is being lifted i'm so excited and um, the grid is new to me, so that may be, yeah, so I am trying to make this today is something you can definitely practice. Like, I think this is really um, a fun way to get to know Pan Pastel and be able to play with the pencils and just play, like get lighter about it all. And my goal this week was to do that. And um, I hope you feel that throughout this session. So I've just picked out, I'm gonna show you two. I'm gonna go through, I, I've picked out all of these pretty peachy pinks for my pencils. And then I picked out these oranges. And this, this is black, the oranges, I've picked out those. And then I went for greens. I didn't wanna go teal and I didn't wanna go um, turquoise. So I'm gonna try to stick with the yellow greens. And I have cut down on my pencils today. You guys, if you've been here every week, you know this is a big feat. <laughs> so we are gonna stick with this, um, it's a complimentary color, color palette. So the reds and the greens are complimentary. And then I like to push, you know, the reds into the oranges and, and pink. So pink, red, anything that's made out of this, and then the greens are gonna be complimentary. So I could even pick the, the um, greens to go turquoise and teal. I don't know how I'm gonna feel. I usually do two parts. I'm not sure how, this, how long this is gonna take today. So it might be a two part or we might be doing two grids this week. I don't know, you know, I think really diving into the grid is gonna be a lot of fun. So let's see what, uh, the grid is new to me. If I can get there, it's approachable. I think it is approachable. I'm really excited for you guys. Cheryl, I thought abstract was completely non-planned and done on a whim of feeling, which is for me, which is hard for me. So this is exciting. Yeah, Cheryl, it's 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 not. It, it's good good um, abstracts all based on composition. Any type of abstract I've done um, will be on a cruciform or or just those basics, and I will work off of that. I mean, this one was probably a little bit more of a whim, but if you look here, if you divide it up into focal points, focal points is the basic of all basics. So it's dividing up your nine by 12 or whatever size you're working with into, into equal parts, into thirds. 
And so you can see on here, this is a focal point. Yeah, I had a heyday and all here, but I do think it kind of works out, but with the focal points, but this was just a lot of fun. It's not all like structure, like you have to follow rules. It's just good rules gives you a good foundation. So um, I just love the colors in that one. <laughs> I just really do. But um, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna just get started and show you where I start from. And I think that's gonna be the, the key here. And so right now I put that little grid on here in pencil and then I wiped it off. And um, yeah, you're probably not supposed to touch your, your piece with your fingers, but I do it anyway. You can use a, a, a soft tool to tone it down a little bit. I used um, this little brush and it's just pencil on there. And then I erased some of it because I was like, wow, I really got into it right there. And it's okay because I just want it to be subtle. I don't want it to be so in your face. Welcome, Loretta. I'm so glad that you're here. Welcome. And so um, when I get the little eraser marks on there, I just brush them off. And most of these will be covered up, but I would say some of these on the edges, I might tone them down a little bit more. I was just really quickly, I was really debating folks about going on the cream paper because you know me, I always work on the dark, but I did a lot of my abstracts on the cream paper. Um, I, um, this is UR 600 um, grade sanded pastel paper. And um, it, the, the, the grade is the most important thing. So I work with the, the 600 and this is the ivory. So when I'm thinking about diving in, you can do it two ways. I think I've played with both of them. And um, I think just taking some black and uh, tapping that into some areas can be really powerful. Now here, when you think of this is divided into threes, I'm thinking we're probably, you know, that's one, two, three, one, two, three. I think it might be up one more. Oh, well. So those can be considered focal points. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Yeah, that's, that, that looks pretty even. And they can be erased. I'm just showing you some focal points. I thought the cream paper would be a lot easier to see some of this on. And if I want to get real literal, I can, you know, just start at a focal point. And I would maybe just go, okay, I'm going to probably knock that out. It could be a circle. It can be a square. So what you're doing is, is I'm just going to think in squares and rectangles and, and breaking some of this out. And um, it doesn't have to be like all straight. You can go at a curve, but what I find is, is that I'm blocking it in, in rectangles. And I don't really know where this is gonna go. So I'm just playing and that's where my push and pull will usually come from is, is on the journey. <laughs> it's like, okay, what did I do here? And um, you can go really skinny and there's definitely more complex things I can integrate into this for composition, but I am um, keeping it simple and approachable today. And none of it is, has to be done exactly like this. We're just breaking up things into rectangles and things like that. I like to put my darks in first. So um, I think that can be the starting point is what I'm doing is, is I'm thinking about where I want to carry my eye throughout. And um, we're putting down values right now. And I'm going pretty light. And it, it, like I say, it doesn't have to be perfect here. Blick sent me a 10 pack with my Wolf charcoal pencils. I only ordered one UR Ivy. That, you know what? Blick has done that to me too. Um, that is always a nice thing. I got two full packs once before and I was like, thanks Blick. Uh, so that was really nice. 
So I'm just sitting here going around thinking about the eye. Um, if you want to think in thirds, like you can break up more, more sections. Like even on this one, I gave the eye somewhere to rest in here. So I, I use this and then I even put, you know, with my pencil, you can start putting in even some marks with that. I can put some of these, you know, circles in here, but they're also, I can go around them fully because I'm going to block out maybe this whole area. I'm just going to use my dark just to kind of And I'm going where I'm not putting it really heavy down first because I don't, um, I can always build up and I can take away too, but. So you can see how this is just fun to play. I mean. And I've touched something in all of the spots except for this one. And so I can leave that. I can probably maybe go back to it and add more, but I'm, I'm not doing a lot of detail. I'm just doing a lot of breaking down and I'll probably start adding some color in here when, when I feel like I've got my blacks. Well, I hope everyone is doing well and feeling well. Over here in the Pacific Northwest, we are in full on spring, so I'm pretty excited. So once I feel like I've gotten quite a few in here with my, um, wand, I'll probably go in with a pencil and add some scribbles and stuff. And I'm just trying to simplify it so you guys can feel like it's something you can go practice, which if you do go practice it and you feel, you know, okay and comfortable, I'd love for you to post it in my Facebook group. So I have a Facebook group. I'm going to pop that in here really quick. If you guys want to sign up, um, please, uh, I will, I will go check the, um, I will go check it to approve, approve you guys. I am trying to get better at that, but if you do, um, share your work or you want to do that, I would love for you to join my Facebook group. So this also can be done to think about value right now. Like if I know I want to put some darks, um, I can get this in here and it's going to help my colors be knocked down, knocked back, I guess, darker. And I, and I could get, you know, even more messier with it. I'm being a little bit gentle cause I'm warming up too. <laughs> I try to do a warm up piece, but I just ran out of time. And it can even be where it's not so perfect in these squares. You see, like, so right now that's a lot of where my whites are going to be or my dark. So I'm gonna have to play around with that. So I'm just going to use my Wolf carbon pencil because I love that pencil. And I'm going to play around with adding just some marks. This is that really fun part where you're just like, okay, I just want to play and
And I'm just using that grid to give me something to guide me for scribbles and stuff. And if I want to blend that in a little bit, I can even use my brush and that's going to put smears on there. Kind of feels like, you know, I'm always after that mixed media vibe. I was like, oh, I'm going to teach a mixed media class, but I'm using all pa pastels. So it, it is all soft pastel, but you see how you're just kind of playing and then it smears it. Instead of using water, I, I can use this to smear it. I can use a um, a brush that doesn't have a lot on there to smear. See? I'm going to smear this so I have something behind it. So the thing with the um, ivory is it's so um, bright. When you don't do an underpainting, all those little marks show through. So, and I can still go put some of these back again. I like that. Doesn't have to be perfect. And, and the thing is, I can bury these lines down, down the way, so none of them are really permanent. I'm really liking this, just smearing it. And that also pushes it into the paper. This is just a fan brush, a bristle fan brush. I don't mind the imperfection, but I want it to at least... So I'm just really trying to get rid of the, the whiteness of it all. And then I'll start, after I feel like I got this layer going pretty good, then um, I will uh, start um, laying in some color and the color will just go on top. And then those colors, pan pastel is an ultra fine soft pastel. There's nothing out there really like it. It's opaque, super, super high pigmented. And um, the families are organized in a way where if the tints are when you take a core, like red here, the permanent red, and you add white to it, you get the, the tint. So this is kind of blown out on the screen, but it, well, actually it's not too bad right now, but this is the, the red tint. And then if I go add black to my red, I'm gonna get the shade. And then if I add more black, I'm gonna get the extra dark. So you can mix everything from the core colors, but that gets a little tedious over time. And um, you'll see why you want the full set or, or get the colors that you wanna use the most often. I would say I probably use about 75% of the set um, the, mo the most, but um, you can definitely, uh, and they last forever. I mean, <laughs> they don't last forever, but they last a long time. Um, I have my pencil sharpener I gotta find real quick, guys. Um, here it is. I've stashed it over here. And even at this stage, if I was like, um, the cool thing with abstract, if I felt like I did something too much, I can always go in with an eraser and, and block that out. I can, you know, add stripes to it right here at that stage. I can take my um, little tiny, I mean, a lot of these marks aren't gonna show through necessarily, but I can put marks in and mess things up. All 
All right, and then I can go back over and brush it off. And I'm just, whenever I'm putting stuff down, you'll see it more when I put the color down, I just think of doing it in the grid. Okay, I'm feeling pretty good about that. Or I might just start laying some color here in. And then if I didn't like something that I did, I can always, you know, blend that in. That's the cool thing about pastel. You can knock something down. I'm gonna stand back and stare at it here for a sec. I feel like I'm gonna go a little bit darker here. Alora, welcome. Oh, welcome. I'm so glad that you made it, Alora. If you if you haven't watched it, I would definitely watch the beginning. I talk a lot about um, what we're working on today and structure and the composition and how it kind of guides us. So All right. I feel like So if you ever want to break something up more, just taking this pencil around and, and putting random marks through, that will break it up even more. I think I really like this white here. So you can do a whole just black and white piece. I mean, I don't have to go into color, but I definitely love the smearing look underneath here. I'm feeling pretty good about that. I think I, I wouldn't mind carrying some of this underneath. This breaks up that formality a little bit, but also I have that grid that's underneath.
Okay. So now I can start laying in some color. And the other thing to think about when you're doing composition and, and a painting and abstract, not everyone does this. I'm just giving you like some like little strings to hold on to on the journey and not to make it overwhelming. So if like today we're doing like a complimentary color, I, I seem to be vibing with this one, but I'm using the colors uh, of this one. And I, I just like the earthiness and the, the more of the peaches and of, of this, but this, this really seems to go with a more traditional grid. But I'm only, I'm limiting my palette. So I'm using these, this is the reds and the greens, and I'm gonna be using the oranges, reds, and greens. And um, this one went more turquoise, and I'm gonna keep this more green. So using two of those color families really works well, and also making one of them the dominant. So if I want more green, then my red's gonna pop out in some spots. And I'm, I'm probably gonna push that to being more green and then popping that out. And this isn't like a, like you have to do it, but it, it definitely is something that with design that I've learned is um, trying to restrain yourself and having one color be the dominant and then the other colors be supporters, um, the complementary or vice versa is, is really helpful. I need to watch the beginning to doing taxes. Oh, I, ju I just got my taxes done. What a bear. Um, my husband still has to finish it out, but I had to do all mine for my business. And um, yeah, not, not fun at all. Sorry, Laura. <laughs> um, Francine, welcome. I'm so glad that you got here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I, did you get to ride your horses today? I think you were the one that says it has the horses. Um, so we're just getting ready to lay down some color. I'm gonna build up a little bit more support on those scallops because I really like them and I don't want them to go away. Okay. All right. Hi, Lorraine. Welcome. I'm so glad that you made it. I, is this your first chat? I think this might be your first chat, Lorraine. Yeah, no. Wow, it's snowing. Wow, I can't even imagine snow right now. Okay, so we've got our, our foundation down. And now we can um, just start having some fun. And with the idea in my head, I'm going, oh, well, I'm going to make my greens be more dominant and I'm also, you know, it's, it's good to mix in sometimes a neutral. So I can use this raw umber uh, as a neutral. I can, um, white is a neutral. It'll gray things out. Um, you know, you're making basically tints. And so I want you, you can see that in this piece, how this is neutraled out. A lot of, you know, it, it gives a place for the eye to rest and it also carries your eye throughout the piece. But the red is, is you know, not dominant, but it's definitely the thing that keeps you into the, the composition. So when you're doing composition, um, they're, you're trying to keep people in the piece and so they don't go fly off out of the piece. So that can be, you know, a little like you enter the piece here and then you go around, you know, I'm sure there's way more skilled people on that, but that is what I've learned on my journey so far. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So I'm going to start um, just bringing in some greens. This is uh, what I have on the palette here is I have bright yellow green and I have the, um, the um, extra dark bright yellow green. I have the Hansa extra dark. I have the Diarolide. Uh, um, that's just diarolide. It's the extra dark though, the diarolide yellow. So that's a yellow green. I have my yellow oxide, which used to be called um, yellow ochre. I have my orange, my orange shade, a red tint. This is white, red, permanent red, uh, permanent red shade. And then this is raw umber, raw umber. I think this is the shade. No, this is the raw umber core, black, 
This is raw sienna. That's in the orangey family. And, um, and then I have our um, red iron oxide, which is like one of my favorite. It's an orangey red that I just love. So I'm gonna be taking my reds into the journey of that. And um, I'm just gonna start, you know, I, I got, you just gotta start laying down color. It can be intimidating at first, but I'm gonna fix one more thing on here. So I have, I'm starting to film my class that I'm working on and um, I'm having to switch things around during when I'm not here live. So that has been a little bit of an adjustment because it's my first time filming a class with um, creating. So I'm thinking about where I want my reds. I'm probably going to tap them into these three areas and um, I'm just going to start laying down some color. And I'm using a dark wand, so they're gonna be a little darker, and I'm okay with that. Now, when I'm laying down the color, I'm laying it down in that kind of grid vibe. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just showing you how it works. Now, the first layers, I'm always blocking in. Blocking in is part of the whole process. It doesn't change. Um, even some of these patterns here, they might go away but I just use that as my starting off point. Margie, welcome. I think this is uh, your first time in chat. Oh, we have Alora, Alora too. Do you repurpose older pieces for art? For instance, some mixed media artists tear up old art and then use them as new. Maybe that's not a technique for pastels. It's not really a technique for pastels. I don't really, I've had the desire. I have, ton, I have bins and bins of patterned watercolor paper that I could put like pastel uh, gel medium or gesso and then do it, but they all have to be framed in the end. So soft pastel has to be framed and we don't use fixative or sealer on it for the color versions. So for me, I don't really uh, repurpose and, um, as much as I, you know, could, but I don't really have a desire to. And so um, I'm always moving forward in that regards, it seems. I've, whenever I go down the tangent that I'm gonna do that, I go and then I realize I'm making it too difficult because pastel is so freeing. I don't have to have all the wet medium around. And um, so I really enjoy being able to just dive right in and not get so messy and have to deal with the glue and the paint. And so I guess that's a long answer to it. So not really, not as much as I would think. When I, you know what, a lot of that happened when I first started. Um, but I, I was going to glue down words. I tried it. I, I glued down words and collage in here and you can do that. I just, I guess I just didn't really like the result. I wasn't as happy with it. So I ended up just going all in with pastel for most of the time. When I was young, I wasn't allowed to take art classes. Now I have the time to follow my heart. I really appreciate the art instruction that you share. It's so helpful and nurturing. Well, you're welcome, Margie. I'm so glad that you came in and, and um, said hi and, and said that. That's really wonderful. I really appreciate it. Lorraine, oh, I just clued in. I'm on my sister's computer. It's Helene. Well, hi, Helene, welcome. I'll try to remember that. You might be called Lorraine today. <laughs> what made you decide to focus on pastel and not any type of art medium? Well, while I share that, I'm just going to tell you, I'm just going to put some of this green throughout and just start laying that in. Um, I um, was a mixed media artist. I did watercolor for 10 years. I was a digital scrapbooking designer. I did rubber stamping. I did acrylic, textile art, the whole thing. But when I discovered Pan Pastel, it was the first time it held my interest out of any mediums. A lot of the other mediums, I felt like I was pushing against something all the time. And um, especially with acrylic. I just, I love to blend and I love, you know, that messiness, but I just never felt fully satisfied. And I was actually in encaustics. I mean, I've really tried it all, you guys. 
I was in an acoustics and I was in a um, store looking for that and we were watching some videos and people were using pan pastel in acoustic wax. If you don't know what that is, it's a, a wax form of art. It's crazy. Um, it's beautiful. It's an amazing medium, but you really need to have a big studio for it and I just don't have it in a ventilation system. So when I did that, I, um, I ended up seeing pan pastel. My friend Lori, she introduced me to it and um, I just thought this was the medium and I started looking up and there wasn't a lot of videos out there on it. If anyone did anything, it was really fine art, portraiture, wildlife, things like that. I'm just going to mix into some of these other greens here and play around with the adding more greens. So when I discovered it um, and started playing around with it, I just felt like I was home. It, I just, the blendability, the only thing that I found from being a mixed media artist that was challenging was um, having to frame th um, the pieces, but I had to frame my watercolors anyway. So after I got past that, you know, I, I have, you know, I just haven't looked back. So it is just a medium that you can start any time. I can go work five minutes. I can work 30 seconds. I can work for hours and um, I don't have to mix anything. And I just find that pretty empowering. And so I just haven't looked back. It's also super versatile. I can do a lot of mixed media looking things that you wouldn't know. Like most people would think, you know, a lot of this is, is mixed media. And I actually did this was an underpainting with watercolor. That is a huge journey. I, I've kind of phased out of that a little bit. Um, it's just, you deal with warping and you're dealing with a lot of stuff, but, um, there's, you can, but you can do a lot of stuff dry without having to do the watercolor as much. I can do alcohol, things like that, but it just ticks all my boxes. I just love it. I, I find I can do so many things that I don't feel trapped in a medium. And so that, that brings me a lot of joy. I love encaustic as well, but I too feel like it's labor intensive and don't have the space to set up. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the encaustic was really beautiful. If I move and can get a larger studio, I'd probably have a station that was encaustic. But um, at this time, I uh, it's just too much. <laughs> I got enough crammed in here already. Okay, so I've put some um, of the greens down. And the other thing at this stage that is a lot of fun is you can take some of the pencils and go into and break down some of these areas and just tap in some color that would be starting off points. So you can see how this was a jumping off point and um, I can go around and, and add some color and some spots just to get the vibes. But I can also do the pan pastel too. So I, I like to do it over the pan pastel, but I'm just showing you, you can do that if you want to, if you want to loosen up some more, like say I felt like, you know, this was a little bit, I could just get some lines in there. Okay, so I'm gonna pop in some of this orange. I don't think I'm gonna use a ton of this orange because green's gonna be the dominant and I'm okay if it mixes in and neutralizes out because this is just the base layer. I'm debating what I'm going to put right here. I might go in with I feel like that oh that's pretty gritty but let's just let's just start. I'm going to loosen up and just start putting 
some color in in the grids. It could flip. I'm really, I try to give myself some structure, but we'll just see how it goes. Um, can always put those lines back in. Whoops. I'm just gonna start laying it in. Because when you're not on camera, you, you're not as cautious sometimes. And if anything, this is to guide you guys to get inspired to try it. But I'm trying not to worry about the, the end results because, you know, abstract is abstract. You don't know where it's going to go. <laughs> And the cool thing is, is a lot of this can be pulled up, um, brought out and even, you know, a lot whiter. But when you're on the um, cream, I always want to get those darks in there. And I find that a little bit challenging with the, um, the cream. want this to be there's a couple things I know I want to hold on to and one of them is this and I am I'm gonna take and put where's my black pencil I only have a few here. Maybe I set it aside. Oh, here it is. I'm going to sharpen this. And I want to put some of these lines I have in. I want to put some more of these in. And then I'm going to put some pencils in there. So it's a, it's a, abstract always starts... Um, you can call it an ugly stage, but I, I really like to call it the uncomfortable stage. We're, we're just not fully like, um, okay, it's, it's going where I want yet. Uh, it actually looks a little drab because it's all the dark colors. We're just blocking in. I'm trying to find little moments to, to spring me off. And um, that's what I'm working on right here. And then I can take some pencils and start. Well, I'm going to use the greens. So when you feel like you don't know what you want to do, I'll, I'll just start moving around. Because my whole goal is I want to make pattern and textures and things like that to play off of. And so you have to start somewhere and you also have to trust that the, the painting is going to um, show you what it wants.
And sometimes I'll just start throwing color in just because I don't really know what it wants yet. It'll talk to me. You'll see the journey. Thank you for the hearts. <laughs> I ordered some of the pastels from Amazon, but some came broken. Just the pan of color does any way to fix this. Yeah, Allura, there is a way to fix it. Number one, make sure you get um, your um, item, you know, uh, make sure they send you out new ones. So complain, always, always, Blick, anybody, um, definitely tell them that this happened and you, they'll send you out some new ones. And then most of the times they let you keep them. So I, I would never just keep an order broken. It's a very common thing for the pan pastels to um, come broken. I don't know why they haven't wised up on that yet, but it just seems to be part of it. So do that and then you can take and um, uh, get the uh, broken part, pat it down lightly with either a tool and get it, and then you put alcohol in it till it's creamy and then you, you shape it in there and then the alcohol will um, dry and, um, then it'll be fixed. I, I don't think I have one out now that I've fixed, but they do work and they're great. Um, they'll still, you know, do what you need. And so I'm mixing this red. This is where pan pastel does not have a peach. I might do this on a, a brighter, on a brighter wand, but, and I'm going to put some peach in here. I can even mix it onto the, This is the um, this is the chrome oxide. No, this is the hands of yellow extra dark. I think I took chrome oxide off. I'm getting these guys in here before they disappear. So it can, it can be, you just definitely have to have some patience with this spot. Ten inches of snow for the first round and another six. Wow, I can't believe you guys got so much snow. I'm really appreciating spring right now. I'm going to put some of this red iron oxide in here. I'm debating what I want these scallops to be. I'm almost thinking they might be like a white or a neutral. 
I, I haven't committed to that yet. Okay. I might hit. Michelle, you're amazing. Thank you so much for all your help. Yeah, definitely, if, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe and um, hit the like button on the videos. That really helps me out. And you can't comment during the chat, but if you ever come back and watch the replay, so all my replay family out there, please definitely tell me what you think. Give me a comment. Um, tell me how you like the video. Tell me where you live. Anything about yourself would be awesome. I love to get to know even my replay family. And um, I just uh, really appreciate the support. And if you want to see more on YouTube and have this be more, uh, I definitely am excited about it growing. So Okay, I might just go and put some neutrals in, in a few spots. I might even just go white here in a few spots and just see what I want for here. And this is going to be a tint because I have that black underneath it. And the thing about abstracts is really just moving forward with them just give it give it your time and and trust that it might not be like amazing the first time you might end up you know not loving it but the biggest thing with abstracts the the biggest takeaway is just sit with it because what it is i've learned is my work i'm not used to seeing it when i do new things and when you're not used to um, do, doing new things, sometimes you can jump to a conclusion that this isn't, you're not good at it. And um, I have literally hosed off abstracts. <laughs> I, I did it once, I'll never do it again. I love the abstract. I was like, what was I thinking? I just wasn't used to seeing my work that way. And um, after a few days, I ended up loving it. And I was just like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I did that. You know, it's it's, it can be a little crazy sometimes what we can think in our head. So now I'm just popping some of those whites around. I'm And some of that stuff that's underneath will go away and I'm okay with that. And I'm not using a solid white, I'm using a raw umber tint. And I'm okay with it mixing. You guys can see in here that it's, it's, it's not perfect. It's just like if I was working with acrylic paint, it's picking up what's underneath there um, if, or if I had it on my brush. And um, I'm just trying to uh, get some color in there. And then I'm also thinking about, do I want to maybe have a larger space here that's a little more neutral? And I might, Go with that I might not <laughs> I might put some more of the greens in here me with a limited palette it just ha I haven't had that as much well I'm gonna keep it green And I can, when I get the pencils going, I can scribble these out. They don't have to be perfect. I can even blend them. That'll make a more solid block. Oh, 
Oh, you did that right now, Al Alora. That's awesome. Way to fix your pan pastel. I am. It's really easy, you guys. Um, I just think we all should deserve a, a full pan. So definitely, um, wherever you get them from, tell them that they did not come right. Okay, I'm going to plop in. I'm going to plop in. Now, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to put in a little bit of neutral and see how I feel about that. This is the raw umber. And it's, it's going to cover up maybe some of those lines. I can always put those back in. I like this. I can do that back over again, though. I think that doing that underneath on the bottom layers is fun. But um, I usually end up covering some of that up. I might end up going over this with a color, but for right now, I'm just going to put some of this neutral in. And I might put some more blacks in once I... Because if I was on the dark paper, more blacks would be showing through here. And so sometimes I have to go put more of those in to get that look that I want. I'm going to put a little bit of... I don't love that. You guys might like it, but I'm... Now, this might be like, oh my gosh, what, what is she doing? But um, this actually creates more abstract things. I can even, you know, take it and um, square it off a little bit more. You know, put more of those uh, grids in there. I just didn't love that, so I'm fixing it. that idea. And then I'm going to use my, I've got to find a dark. That's awesome. Yeah, Alora uh, put the alcohol in the pan. Oh, she explains it right down here. Well, you guys are all working it out. That's awesome. All right, so I didn't really love that, so I'm going to um, fix it, and I'm. I think I'm going to put a. Uh, I'm not trying to be perfect here. And then I'm going to take them with the colors here. I usually like to find one type of pattern thing and then I'll I'm honestly just going with like what I'm inspired, like like impulses.
go green on that. And I can go over this more with pencils as I go. I'm just trying new ideas. And then, um, we'll see where that goes. So what I've noticed is that some of my blacks aren't really in there. So I'm gonna go around and put some more of my blacks in. I might have hit them down a little bit too much. Because I want my blacks to peek out a bit. So my boys, both of them, are off on spring break this week. So I have everybody home, which is nice. But they're all being really quiet. And <laughs> I'm just putting in a few more of these blacks. Loving the, okay, I missed this, Michelle. Loving the demo so far, Dawn. I love watching my two coffee lives on my Wednesdays and Fridays, heading back to my recliner, watching you on the big telly to type, I have to go to a different location. <laughs> Don't forget that. Okay, I missed that. Thank you. I'm glad you're loving it so far. It's definitely at an interesting stage right now. I think someone was asking if her name was from a movie, Willow. Oh, that's what it was. I love that movie too. It's been a long time since I watched it though. Abstract is a tough one for many of us. It's sometimes you have to wait until you love it. I have not had that experience yet with abstract as I've never loved them, but I will try it with pastels. Yeah, it, it you, you have to like, this will probably be a two part. It, it's a, it's a push and pull. And, um, I, uh, the one hard thing with doing abstract live, is I, I just really have to um, know that it will find its way, but it, it, it will have a, a strong look that I'm not a fan of in the beginning, and then all of a sudden it'll hit for me, and I'll be like, oh, okay, I feel so much better. My husband can attest to that. Like he, I'll, I'll be one night, I'll go to bed, and I'll be like, oh my gosh, I am just not loving my piece right now. And then I'll end up coming back and go, oh, I had that moment. And um, that always feels really good. But you ha it's a journey. And I think uh, definitely give yourself a chance to do a few abstracts before judging it. Because um, how, like how many abstracts have you done when you, when you give up? I, I have my good friend Lori. We were together one day and I was showing her some abstract stuff and she's just like, I'm not good at this. And I'm like, well, how many have you really done? And she's like, like two. And I'm like, yeah. 
when you go look at someone's feed that's done a lot of them, they've, they've, they've done a lot and it, you just kind of get where you start feeling them and you find your own groove on them. So you can see though how I'm breaking up things into that grid to initially give me some guidance to, to go. And I think um, that is, is the key to really having a, a stepping off point. Um, I think I'm going to put some more whites in here. I'm trying to think about where I want the, the lighter colors to go. So at this spot, I have things pretty blocked in and I'm, um, going to start layering up with some pencils and um, just figuring out what I want on this little spot right here. And it's all about layering. You know, you have to be okay with doing quite a few layers. Looks like we got about 50-50 with green versus red here, but I'm going to play around with adding some pencils now. And I want to start bringing that pinky peachy look. You know, I might add a little bit of that, more of that here. So remember the peach is the yellow and the red together. And then if I want it to come up full peach, I can use some of that tint. That is the red tint and the, um, the permanent red with the um, permanent red tint together brings out that pink. And once I start getting those pinks in here, I think it's really the peachy pinks, it's gonna start hitting. So I, I've been through this stage so much that even I doubt it. So don't, don't you know, if you feel that way, you know, I, I still have those moments where I'm like, oh my gosh, Dawn. And, and this piece might be heavier on the red. I just have to go with what I'm feeling, you know? I really love that with the green. So I'm just trying to get my um, mark making to not be so perfect so other things peek through. Since I wasn't here for the beginning, I have to wonder, did you start on white paper today? 
Welcome, Francine, good observation. Yeah, I did start on uh, Ivory today. I thought it would be a little bit easier to um, guide you guys along with the Ivory on a grid. Um, I think the black's a little challenging. And so um, I am, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely working on the, the Ivory. And you know, I haven't worked on the Ivory a ton in a while, so I'm having my own getting warmed up with it. It just doesn't give me that pop like I get with the um, with the black. But I also want to show you, you know, you can work with the ivory. I might just do those white. I'm gonna go through with a few pencils. Gosh, I gotta order this one, you guys. There's almost a celebration happening here is I'm gonna be out of this pencil soon. I had to write what number it was on it because I've worn off the numbers. It's a 675 Carbothello. And I'll also list all the colors I have in this piece when I'm done, but um, I was, I'm always excited and I always want to celebrate for those new here. I like to celebrate when I use my supplies because that's the framework I really want to shift is that, um, that, that means I've shown up. I've used that pencil all the way down. We need to celebrate that and not worry about using something up so much. And I think, uh, that's exciting. So I have this, I got to order this pencil. I have a few more that I also need to order. So I'm at this stage where I can start putting in pencils and details and just layering up. And if I didn't have anything below this, I really wouldn't see these lines as much. And the grid has basically gotten me to where I am. And now I can use it and, and pattern it along, but um, as you can see, it's not really straightforward squares. It's just a stepping point. And I think that's important to, to note. But the next layer that I'm gonna bring on here, I can really feel that that's going to elevate this piece. I do want to have some darks punching, you know, giving that value in here. I think the some of the most important things with like um, abstracts is, is having enough contrast and value. So I can always go over some of this that I have here with the dark black and it'll make it, it'll push it back. And um, it'll give that value that it needs. And, and on the black paper, it's not that tough to do because you're actually pulling things out from the black paper. But because I'm using ivory today, I have to be a little bit more conscientious of it. And I really want to take some of these pencils and create some of these lines with the, with the um, grid kind of vibe, supporting some of those spots. I, I really enjoy this, this part where I'm starting to feel it a little bit. I really want those, I don't know why I knocked those back all the way. I have my trusty dowel. You know what, I'm just gonna take a moment. I could feel that. <laughs> I've gotta stretch a little bit. I'm finding after these lives, I'm like, oh my gosh, did that really happen? So I'm standing in like a two foot, two foot spot.
All right, I gotta do self-care. Self-care on the chat, through the chat here. I always panic when my colors are getting muddy. What do you recommend when that happens? Well, the cool thing with pan pastel, you guys, is you know, what is really muddy, you know, like right here is pretty, I would say maybe muddy if you would define it, but um, you can always erase, you can always change something. If you feel like a spot's gotten a little muddy, I can just erase this and add something here. Um, erasing is not a mistake, it's a tool. And, um, can't really, I don't blow off in my studio, so it's use the taps. But then I can put that back there if I feel like it's gotten too muddy. So um, I think just getting to know how the pastel, here, just a second. I know I was gonna do something. Oh, I was gonna fix these guys. So just knowing how that pastel reacts and works, it just takes time, but I think the one thing with pastel is, you, is it's really hard to get muddy colors. And if you are getting muddy, maybe you're putting too much down. Um, you can always uh, erase and make changes that way. I hope that that was helpful, but I feel like pan pastel, the way you can lift off the paper and add, you can really prevent a lot of that um, muddiness. Hi, Crisella. Welcome. I'm so glad you're here and that you made it. I think we all deserve a little pat on the back for just surviving the painting's awkward teen stage. Yeah, the uncomfortable, awkward stage can be a challenge. And, and I think that's what I love, like even doing this in two parts, this whole, you know, um, live journey is part two is my f the most fun for me. But uh, I like it because I can really sit back and kind of take the piece in. And um, I don't always see everything when I'm doing it live. And so uh, I can just, I think you've got to give your, your painting some time to breathe. And um, that's really important. And I'm going for a messy look. <laughs> I don't want it to be perfect. So if anything looks too, um, perfect or staged, I, I will usually knock it back or mess it up. So I'm just getting some more darks in here. I'm feeling like it's a little bit light on some spots. So I'm carrying that around the piece to carry your eye throughout on an abstract. And um, that's what I'm thinking. Abstracts are a lot, most of it's practice. You just got to practice. I'm going to get this kind of smooth out a bit. And then... I'm still thinking about the grid. Okay. I have this spot up here that I took. I think I'm going to go with white there. Well, let's just see what happens. So this is going to tint out quite a bit wherever I put it. And I, I want to put a little bit of lighter colors throughout, kind of pull up some areas. And then that's going to make another color on top of it and it'll neutralize things out, which I think it's pretty cool. 
So the tints will always bring up the colors. So we put, we block things in and now we get to put white or I can use a tint to pull up some of these colors and then they'll become their higher value. So we're just using the value scale and I have quite a few things in this mid-tone range because I put most of my, um, I put most of my blocking in between the mid-tone and the 10. And then I know I can pull things out. And things look pretty mid-tone right now because I, I'm just putting color down and now I can refine some, some spots and put some in and see what I want it to be and make more marks. And I'll go through, like this was a light wand and it'll become a darker wand just because of this stage is a little bit challenging. I'm keeping it white. So I know all of this is the dark green And you know, you might be a, a, a neater, a neater, neater, a more structured um, abstract. I, I personally like to build structure and then break it down. And, and you'll have to, you know, find your way on that. Um, we're all, that's where we become, where we get our voices is um, by figuring out what kind of mark making we like and, you know, even keeping a little journal of it. And, um, the one thing um, I, I'm trying to remember who said, I think it was Elora. Elora, the, uh, the other way to help if you're getting a lot of mixing of colors is really wiping off your wand in between color changes. So um, that can help from getting muddy. Whenever I feel like colors are starting to mix in too much, I'm, I'm wiping it off onto my microfiber. So that's something to think about. And my eye is just going around and I'm just floating around here trying to think of where I want to bring the values up here. And these tools can be mark makers. I want to play with this and get this, this isn't going to be this structured and bury these guys a little bit. So once I get where I get a few marks in there, I can play on that and then I can bury some lines and edges. That's what my brain's thinking. Bring some more of these peaches colors in here. So right here is starting to really become a focal point. I bet you I just got pastel on my face. You guys would tell me, right? <laughs> um, like this is one of the focal points. This is a focal point in this one. So 
they're all playing off of that and then I'm bringing my eye through with that. So I'm just playing around. I know I can put a lot of detail and brightness in this area. I don't know how this is going to go, if I like it, if I love it, if it's going to go and be something different, if I'm going to erase it, I just don't know yet. I like that with the white. I'm going to go back with, I have this extra peachy. This is a beautiful Carbothello peach. It's a 681. So Carbothellos are my favorite starting pencil um, for a, like if you're wanting to get your first set, it's a great set. Well, we got a lot of good structure going on for the for the core. I really like this area right here with the fading of those colors. And we're just continuously bringing things up. So I'm looking over on my screen because I find that's really helpful. And um, let's see, I have a question here. Can you talk more about your wand management? How many do you use at a time? Dark and light for each color family, etc. Oh, well, wait, I have to say hi to Lynn. I saw your message was retracted, but welcome, Lynn. Oh, I'm so happy to see you here. Um, she's bought some of my paintings. Um, Margie, you know, I, here's my wands in front of me. So you can see I have four right now and they all look kind of a mess. <laughs> so I might have to go and, um, put another, you know, flip one of these. So see, I have a fresh one right here and I might need to take that and flip it here in a little while because I'm live. I will say that, um, I'm not as cognizant of the, my wand usage but normally I usually have one for lighter and one for dark and then what I'm doing is, is I have a microfiber towel this is my yellow one and I'm wiping off in between when I change a color so if I want if I use this and I end up going oh I'm going to go to red now I'm wiping that off pretty good before I go to red and I will just keep using that same wand throughout. And so um, until they wear, wear down where they get too um, uh, frayed. And so um, these microfiber towels really hold on to my pigment. And so I feel like that doesn't fluff and get into the air. And that's why I use a microfiber towel instead of a, um, instead of a paper towel and paper towel only holds so much. And so, uh, I'm going to take this and go up into here and see what it does. And then I'll, I'll check back into chat here. Especially when I'm like, this is a darker one but I'm using white with it, but I'm okay with that because I know it's going to blend in here. If I find it's getting muddy, then I, um, I will go and, and switch my wand. But I'm mixing already quite a bit on the paper. So I think I want to bring these worlds together. I really do like that spot there. But, and I might, just using that red tint to see, and then I'm mixing in the green. I could go with some pencils on these marks here, but sometimes I want to break a line up. And it's getting a little muddy there, so I'll find a wand that's not as dark. And, a, and you also might want to change your towel out if it, gets, if it gets too muddy. So if anything, 
I just, you know, really want you guys to see that, you know, it is an approachable abstract. It's just having some fun and finding your mark making along the way. And that, and that takes time. So you definitely have to be okay with the journey and that it's going to take some time and you might end up finding out you, you're really into pencils and you want to do more pencils, which I'm getting ready to move more into. I go back and forth. Holy cow, you guys, it's 312. I haven't even looked at the clock once. That's crazy. Oh my goodness. <laughs> You're doing what you love when time just goes by. Let's see if I have any more questions. Okay. Oh, right. Okay. Dawn, did I answer your question on my post on your Facebook group about the sandpaper? I also done another piece on a four piece of sandpaper, 600 grit. I'll have to go check that out in the Facebook group, Michelle. Michelle lives in, um, it's Australia. You're in Australia too. I hope I'm not wrong on that one, but it's hard to get you art there. So she was going to the hardware store and got um, sandpaper, a 600 grit. So I, I think I was asking you which was your favorite grit and an A4 piece is the size on a 600 grit. I, I'm just asking if, um, how you like it, if you feel like the 600 grit holds up with the, with the tools and, and how you felt on that with um, using regular sandpaper versus UART. Uh, to my knowledge, UART is um, uh, made through a sandpaper company. I'm not sure what backer they use. I'm not sure if it's the same things as sandpaper. Not saying any of that. I just know that they're connected. Um, but it's pretty cool if you can't get the, the real UART to be able to maybe use sandpaper. <laughs> my husband and I were thinking about that, and we were like, she beat us to it. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Um, Earlier, you said you don't blow off the dust that you TSP in your classes. I have seen a YouTube, I have seen a YouTube on your easel that is hooked to a vac. I love your paintings. Yes, Lynn, um, this is hooked to a vac. Uh, I used that a lot when I was in the beginning. And um, what happened over time is I realized pan pastel isn't really shedding that much. And so I'm not using the vac. I have it on here. I have a exhaust system that's a hole at the base of my um, easel. And um, I think if I was using stick pastels, which sh shed so much more, I mean, pan pastel barely sheds, I think I would feel a little like I would wanna use the vac. So I, I don't use it much anymore. Um, and um, it's because pan pastel, I just feel like doesn't get all over and I don't blow off. So I will take this, I'll tap it on here and then I'll go blow it off outside or I'll tap it into a bin. And um, that is how I manage um, the pastel and I'm on an easel so it sheds down. Okay. I was looking online today for art workshops and retreats in Oregon. And there was just not a ton of offerings right now, but I'm looking forward to yours whenever it happens. Well, thank you. I have been definitely thinking about that with doing all this live um, and all of the changes I've made, I can only add so many changes on in my life, but I'm pretty excited about maybe doing that uh, down the road. I, I definitely would love to find somewhere in the States to do that. Um, I could probably go to Europe, but I don't think I'm, ready for that at this moment, but um, I do have connections with that. I just don't know if that's where I want to, I don't know if I want to take that on right now. It would be great to find somewhere more local. Yeah, there, there's only, um, I'm taking a stick pastel class from a, a guy, I think it's Elaine over at Dakota in uh, Mount Vernon. And um, he's been doing pastel with sticks for 50 years. I just want to go soak up the energy of someone that's been in there for 50 years. So it'll be interesting to see what, what takeaways I get from that. 
as being a pan pastel artist, but I'm willing to go do that and explore. So I'm excited about that, but I'm checking out that place. I don't know if I'd ever be able to get on at Dakota Pastel because I think they're more of a um, pastel society, a little more formal, that type of thing. So, um, but we'll see. Usually when I put something out into the universe, uh, opportunities arise. So I'm just playing around here and adding. I'm at that spot now where I can start bringing something up or pushing something back. It's a little choppy through here, so I might bridge a gap here and bring up the values. And um, I'm not sure if I, I love this up here. I'll just see how I feel. A lot of it's just, I think what I'm gonna do is bring this up right here and then play with the pencils for the last few minutes. You can also get it cheaper in the States, like 10 sheets for $9.59. Grit sandpaper for grinding and polishing. Yeah, I, I think the, um, I'm not sure if sandpaper is cheaper than the UART paper here in the States. I, I think, I buy mine all in the roll, so I get it really cheap, um, but I have to do that initial investment. But yeah, for not it being so precious, it, it definitely gives you a little bit more permission to play, but Remember too, all of the UART paper, you can erase it all off if you don't, if it didn't turn out. Like I can erase this whole piece and re reuse the paper. So that's kind of nice. Good, I, I remember that right, Michelle. I was like, I, I brain, my brain locked up. <laughs> do you wash the microfiber towel? And if so, do, does it make a mess in your washer? These are great questions today. Um, the microfiber towel, I wash them all in their own load. I take the um, towels and I keep them separate from my other ones. And no, it does not leave a mess in my washer. I have not had a problem with that. Um, Yeah, Francine, I, I definitely am interested in, in trying to go local on that. Um, I, I've been over to um, Scotland and uh, my friend Ivy, she teaches abroad quite a bit. And I don't know if I want to teach abroad first on my first go, but I just don't know how it'll go. And I don't know, I don't know, YouTube's really taking a lot of my time right now. So to do a class and everything on, you know, teaching in person, I, I don't know where that's gonna go. So I'm just holding on and seeing what happens. So this spot, I'm gonna bring this up. And then I'm gonna play with the pencils oh, I think I could have done that a different color well I'm really excited to see where this one goes you guys it's really just got at the beginning. I'm sure um, when you guys come back on Thursday, it's gonna take a journey. Abstracts just that way, you just don't know what it's gonna do. I almost think I'm gonna like just putting some white around that cause that's kinda, I don't know. I feel like this is a lot and I might tone it down in some way, but we got some more questions here. The discussion about muddy colors reminds me to ask, do you ever use the colorless blender? It came with my portrait set and wonder if it's useful. I tried the colorless blender and it just, I just haven't found a usage for me. I don't know. Um, 
I, I see its point, but I also haven't really connected with it. So I don't really have an opinion with it. I think you just need to play with it. I would have to just play with it more too to see what I would want to do. And um, All right. Gosh, 322 guys. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm bummed that it's gone so quickly today. I feel it. I feel like I've been here for a while, but I think before I go, I'm gonna start bringing in some of these fun pencils. The cool thing is these pencils can go over the white. I love how busy Chad is today. You guys are awesome. Yeah, you know, I'll do some research on the colorless blender and play with that a little bit more, but um, I'd have to totally bust that out. So I'd have to play with it and um, see what I can uh, do. Okay, Alora. I would appreciate thinking local as well. It's going to Europe would be way out of my budget. Yeah, it is expensive. Well, you guys definitely, you know, these lives really help me out because it's like, um, it gives me ideas of, I can do a YouTube short about the colorless blender, you know, uh, I'll, uh, you know, try some things out and see w how I feel about it and, um, try to get some ideas for, uh, how I would use it and what I would use it for. So another thing to do is maybe make up a journal of like mark making ideas. Like if you see some mark making that you like, I think that definitely helps when you're doing the mixed media. I mean, like abstract, I always want to call it mixed media, but it's just abstract. And, um, you know, some people will be like, oh, well, I'm done. You know, you can be, you can be, but I definitely have a lot more layering to go on this. So, um. I'm, I'm just getting warmed up, you guys, to be quite honest, which, let's see what color this is. My understanding about the blender is it makes pigment more transparent, so it would help with glazing, but I think my brain works more in opaque colors like gouache. Um, if I put a colorless blender on here, it would be where I'm not using any pigment and then it would blend the two to my knowledge. 
if I recall, it's been a long time since I've used it. So I think it would be fun. Like, let me see if I have it right here. Let's see here. I should have it right down in here in my stash. So it would be kind of, I'll just put it on if I can find it. I mean, that's been how long, I do have a broken pastel of my own here. Wait, I think I found it. Nope, that's titanium white. Please bear with me. I mean, I might have stashed it. Hmm. I might have it stashed away in my other drawer. But why don't I do this? I'll bring the color of Splendor to our thing next time. And then we will see what it does. And I'll play with it on here. That would be fun. I don't mind doing that. For as long as I've been arting, I've had such a hard time with layering. I hate covering stuff up, even if I don't like it that much. Anyway, for some reason, I have a feeling I could be cured with the pan pastel. Yeah, the, the really cool thing, you guys, is I can change any of this. I can literally erase the whole thing. It, it, it just allows so much freedom, you know? Freedom is where it's at. So um, just don't be afraid to, to show up and play. And, and um, it's not, it's okay if, if you don't like it. But what the cool thing is, you showed up and played and used your product. And I don't ever, I want to encourage people to um, just play and have fun and, and don't try to always create something that you can show people because that's just not what, what it's, what this whole journey is, is like, we got to just have that time and it's not wasted time. The time is so valuable, just playing and understanding the product and what you're, you know, just like color swatching. You can even do that with this, you know, it's, it's so much possibilities. I feel like I just need to bring up some of these layers a little bit more before I put the pencils on. And it also gives me some mark making ideas. Okay. So I have no knack for the blender yet. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> Thanks. I've played a bit with it mixing colors on scraps and didn't find any better than the white or the tints. I thought it may work better within the piece. Yeah, I'll definitely bring it. I'll find it. Helene. Yeah, layering is the key. Like a lot of people might think this is finished, but if you look at this, guys, I mean, this is an older piece that I love. I always think I could do this too, um, but I can't do anything and replicate it. It just stresses me out too much. So I'm kind of going with this combo, but you know, this is one layer. This is a bad printout, but this is just the basics. And then this is where you get at the end. And so it, it takes time to get there. Like right now, if you look at the pieces that I have, for examples, before we go, um, this is really layered up. And um, I've used a lot more pencils here and I've basically, things are pretty flat right now. And then look how busy this one is. And that one's a lot of fun. And this is the colors I'm going off of and I'm playing around with this. Oh, I put it to the side. But um, I love, I love to add and add and add and add until I get bored. But see, I'm always trying to find, I'm always trying to find my style on the journey that allows me to do that. I want to build the structure. So if I want to scribble and scribble and scribble and um, have my moment with these pencils, the structure allows me to do that. And I want to get that out of my system where I can be free and show up and just have fun. And that's what this is allowing me to do. And um, a lot of people, when they see art already made, they're like, oh, you know, like it just took them a little bit of time and they just showed up without any planning. I really don't think that's true. I think people have to plan or they've done so many paintings, they know what's gonna happen to a certain degree. And that's kind of where I'm at. I do know where it's gonna happen to a certain degree. I know to push through this part. I know this isn't um, my finished spot for me, but it could be for you. You know, it, you just have to have fun and follow your joy. If it's more joyful to create more mark making, if um, I, I discovered I really love 
when it when I erase, it abstracts it out even more. It, it makes it look not so structured. So the eraser is a tool for me. That's something I had to learn and um, it didn't just happen overnight for sure. So I'm gonna answer a few questions before I leave here. Um, I hope you guys will come back on Thursday because Thursday, this is gonna have a whole another layer. Okay, let's see. The journal is a great idea, something I wanna work on. Okay, I must've missed that for the journal. I really love the vibrancy and the depth of the piece. Thank you, Francine. There is an art journal for pan pastels. Oh, you wanna make one. Yeah, I wanted to journal for pastels. If you do journal or do something, it's just not the same paper. Um, I just let it be messy, <laughs> but I haven't really found where I've loved journaling yet with pastel. It's just, I think it's just because for the way I work, I liked working on an easel with it. I'm not sitting. Um, I think that adds a little bit more formality to it. The journaling type of work I do is the style I use for black pan pastel with a gold. That's more of a mixed media vibe. Black pan pastel is a lot like charcoal, but it's ultra fine. And I have classes for that and, and lessons that, um, I show that technique. It's where you're lifting it and it's a whole different vibe than this, but I do a lot of journaling with that. Um, let's see here. Oh, I do have pan pastel. Well, thanks for telling me before I go, at least I can get that off. Right. I have a little mirror here, but well, I don't really see it. You guys are so sweet. Um, thank you. Laura, you're sweet. Thank you. Laura, this must be a different Laura. Welcome, Laura. I don't think I've, I've seen you here in um, chat before. How would you erase? Cheryl's asking, what are... Okay, you're going to have to expand on how would I erase. Are you meaning on here? Because I've showed um, that you can erase on here. This piece is just begging for a bird in flight. Lovely. But birds in flight. I love birds too. Dawn, how would you erase this piece? I'm always afraid of messing up my work and I think I could use my, um, I think I could use, I'm always afraid of messing up my work and didn't think I could use any pencil. Well, I would just erase. I, I have these special, um, Vanish white erasers. They're from um, Jerry's Artorama. I'll put them in there. These are my favorite. But let me see. I like if I have this piece here, I'll just show you real quick before I go. If I was working on this piece and I got all this going here and I got my pencils, you know, and I was like, oh man, I think I'm having fun. And then um, sometimes the pencils will dig in a little bit, but for the most part, so we'll, re we'll pretend that's our piece. And then, oh, well, I just had this whole piece of paper and now I'm just gonna erase it all. Magic. This is UART mounted onto a map board. I have a video on my YouTube, um, definitely. Uh, changes that your game when you mount your pastel paper so I can always reuse this guys like I can I can do a whole painting on here and erase it if I want and there might be a halo of some of it underneath if I was using the cream but it doesn't really happen with this very much but um, yeah nothing's precious with the UART paper you can erase it and you can start over if you want okay I hope that answered your question Cheryl Michelle, thank you so much. I'm glad you're loving it. Carrie, morning everyone, just waking up, so I'll have to watch the video again later. So glad you came, Carrie. At least you said hi. I hope you have a good day and good morning. Um, if you frame a finished piece, would the pastel product just slowly fall off through the years since you do not seal it? Well, Elora, that's a great question. Pastel, especially on a sanded um, pastel paper, um, pastel is one of the most archival mediums. That is one of the reasons why I'm here is to demystify the idea that it's just going to fall off. 
I have hosed off one of these, um, done a video on it and it won't even hose off. It, it um, might smear a little bit, but um, yeah, if I put my finger on here, it, it, I, it would pull up, but you tap them off, you blow them off before you frame them. And the thing with pastel, they just need an extra little gap underneath the mat or to be framed with spacers. So when they get framed, they get framed with a reverse mat, which the mat would be here. And then there'd be a mat behind that's bigger than that hole. And then that allows any shedding, if there is any, to go off and not be seen. So um, I never seal any of my color works. It would totally knock back the whites and dull things. And so none of um, my finished pieces get sealed. They um, get stored in between two pieces of glassine. Like I just fold a big piece in half and put it in between. And then they just get stored flat until I frame them. Um, I'll sometimes store them in between two pieces of cardboard. That's also really helpful. Uh, so I hope that answers your question there. I hope to do a short video on that um, to show how I frame. Let's see, don't forget to hit the thumbs up and the subscribe and comment when the video goes up. Thank you so much, Michelle, I really appreciate it. Oh, I see Francine, the journaling, I mean, that was for like just making mark making and uh, keeping track of like different mark making that you like, circles, squiggles, scallops, dots, like coming up with a library of marks. That is what the journaling is. Thank you, Francine. I really appreciate you circling back on that. There's a lot to remember here. Um, Laura, no, it's me on my laptop. Okay, just making sure I got the right Laura. I thought that was you. Um, what is a colorist blender? A blending stump? No, that's a pan pastel. It's a, a, a pan pastel like this, and it's just called Colorless Blender. I will find it, and we will talk about that on Thursday, so be sure to be back here on Thursday. Um, Temple, this was fun. So looking forward to part two with the mark making. Yeah, I'm really excited for that too. Helene, welcome Helene. I'm so glad you're here. And um, I guess you mount before painting. Or can you use a used one? Um, I have mounted after my painting. You don't want to do that. It's really hard. You have to work with glassine and mounting can be a little tricky. I always mount before because I can always erase it. So I'm not really committing. It's, um, this is on a, a really wonky piece. It's just so I can show you guys and have something here really easy. I've put probably three whole layers of stuff on this thing and erased it every time. So. Yeah, you can always, um, I mount it first. I have a video, it's in there. Um, it shows you how to mount your pastel paper and up your pastel game. <laughs> I really think it is, it, it, this is all mounted. Everything's mounted. I, I can't stand it being loose anymore, but that's just me. But all right, please do a framing video, Margie. I'm gonna do probably a short. I think I'm gonna film a short with um, some frames I need to do because I, I'm tight on time. I think that's gonna answer your questions though, since I'm sure a lot of us creatives are uh, visual learners. So I'm gonna do a short. Um, Michelle, enjoy the rest of your day with your boys. It's been so good being quiet. Bye and chat. Well, thank you, Michelle. Thank you, everybody. I'm so glad that you're all here today. I really appreciate your support and um, I will see you guys on Thursday. And I think you're gonna be pretty amazed how, how much this will turn um, and it will change. And what the biggest thing to think about is it will harmonize together in ways that um, will be unexpected. So I look forward to it. Thank you so much, everyone. I really appreciate you and we will see you on Thursday. All right, bye.